Hi, this is Matt, and today I'm looking at OpSWAT Meta Access and how that integrates with Unified Access Gateway, which is typically a component used within the VMware Horizon solution. So where UAG fits, if it's uh, something you're not familiar with, that is uh, used for remote access. So when you have remote users that are coming in, if I just come down to this diagram, and are connecting in, let's say as a use case would be from home through to a virtual desktop or virtual application, they would come in via that SSL gateway, so that, that UAG, that Unified Access Gateway. So what we're looking at here is a product called OpSwap, which brings in posture checking and compliancy checking to that connection. So if a user was working from home, you could put in place some compliance and some checking. Uh, there's a little caveat, it's not a huge one, but there is an OpSwap client that would need to run on that endpoint. So just before we look at the OpSwap management console, I'm just gonna quickly go to um, VMware workstation. Here, I just built a Windows 10 virtual machine just to install that um, OpSwap agent on so that I'd have something I could monitor and run compliancy against. So let's go back to that diagram just real quick before we go, just so you can see how it all um, clicks together. If you imagine a remote user, their device status would be being checked by Meta Access, and then when they're connected, through to a Horizon desktop application, they go to UAG, it would feed that information back to Meta Access and then determine whether the device was compliant. And it would also look at the posture and if everything was okay, it would continue and let the user connect through to that desktop application. So we just take a real quick look at the Meta Access portal because if you use Horizon or you're familiar with the VMware products and you've used UAG, you've probably seen that side of it, but possibly you haven't seen the Meta Access side of things. So in here, you can see that I've got one device that's being monitored. That's just that virtual machine I built. If we look at that, what you'll see is that it's a uh, Windows 10 desktop it's running a specific agent version. There are three issues when it was last rebooted, it's IP, it's Mac, and when it was last seen. You can see here that's not actually compliant. So if we go in and look a bit more detail, you can see from here, I got some device information. So the OS, um, you know, the agent version is running the last time it was seen, last time it was booted, the MAC address, um, you know, public IP address, host name, those sort of things. If I go through to my issues, this is where I can see what the problems are. So those are those three things that Meta Access was highlighting. So Defender hasn't been run uh, in a period of time. The device uh, isn't encrypted, so I'm not using BitLocker to, to encrypt the C drive. And there's an issue with patch management as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into that virtual machine and just quickly run the vendor. I'll just go full screen for a second. Okay, so I want to see if a quick scan is going to be good enough. So I trigger that, so I need Defender scanning. And then I'm going to go back to MetaRex, so we'll check on that in a bit. So we'll see if that resolves that one particular issue. So this is basically where I can see um, my device isn't compliant. As I said, there's some issues. So really where I want to control those things that I care about and, and you know, control what users um, you know, need to be compliant with. So which versions of uh, operating system, you know, whether they have like AV installed, those sort of things, that would be through the policy. So if I start to create a new policy, let's do real basic one demo policy. I'm using Meta Defender Cloud. And then we're gonna define. So here you can see, you can define the different operating systems. So obviously I'm using Windows whether you're querying vulnerabilities, compliancy, infections, unwanted apps, or any sort of other, other custom, um, I guess, sort of scripts that you want to check or, or custom checks. Um, and then it's against whether, you know, it's a desktop, laptop, VM server. You know, you've got your patch management settings here. So we go into compliance. You know, do I care about things like anti-malware, uh, real-time protections enabled, disabled, you know, whether encryption's being run, um, you know, whether the, the 
endpoints got password protection enabled, whether the screen locks applied, you know, backup settings, firewall settings, OS settings, minimum levels. So if you are going to let users come in, it might be on particular levels of Mac, it might be on particular levels of Windows. We go to Android, for example, you can see that there's less options. Um, and here we're more concerned about things like if the device is rooted or jailbroken, um, you know, if internal script, you know, internal storage is encrypted, it's now date OS, minimum versions of iOS and Android. Okay. So any unwanted, um, you know, it could be particular apps that you want to block. Maybe you want to say that, you know, you don't want them, um, you know, running. Obviously, you know, you can see there's some options to uninstall. Um, so if this is, you know, personal devices, you know, I wouldn't imagine you'd be able to do those sort of things. You can you know, uninstall. But with the bottom line is that if you are allowing remote access to your Horizon environment and you are integrating with this, at least you can run some sort of compliance and, and posture against those unmanaged devices. You know, in another world, if you're running uh, Workspace One Unified Endpoint Management, and your devices were managed, you'd be able to control a lot of that compliance and posture checking through there. But this is really helping you with that uh, unmanaged scenario, kind of more specifically to the VMware Horizon environment. That was it just in a real nutshell. I just wanted to give you a quick uh, visual of, of what MetaAccess look like, uh, how that integrates with UAG. Um, it's supposed to really just be high level. As I say, it might be that as an existing Horizon customer, you've seen UAG, never, sweet, never seen Meta Access, and just wondered what it looked like. So there you go, just a quick introduction. I hope it's been of use.